Welcome everyone. I'm very excited to um, share with you information today about the Gelman Scholarship. So I'm Catherine Quinto. I work in the Nationally Competitive Scholarships Office and my colleagues who are here today, I'm excited to introduce um, several wonderful guests. Um, Mandy Lacito, the graduate assistant in Nationally Competitive Scholarships, is co-presenting with me today, so we are excited about that. Um, and we also, if it works for everyone, can go around and introduce ourselves. We have a student guest who will be sharing about her experiences as a Gilman Scholar, and two of our colleagues are here as well. So would you all like to introduce yourselves? Daniela, would you like to go next? Sure. Daniela Martinez, I work in the Center for Global Engagement with our Education Abroad folks, and I am just here to hear about Jimena's experience in, with Gilman. Thank you. And my name is Shane Bono, and I also work with the Center for Global Engagement. I am the Education Abroad Advisor based on the Gainesville campus, and so I'm also happy to work with students as they work through this process. And I'm Mandy Lacido, and I'm the graduate assistant for Kirka and NCS. And uh, when it comes to Gilman, I have been um, just advising for over a year now. This will be my second year advising on Gilman scholarships, and I've been with the office for three years now, but this is my third year. And my name is Jimena. I'm the student that went to Spain. <laughs> um, I won Gilmer. Gilman last, well, I went to Spain last summer. Excellent. Well, thank you all for introducing yourselves and we will hear a bit more about Jimena's experiences and first uh, we'll do an overview of the Gilman Scholarship itself um, that Mandy and I will be presenting. So with that, I am going to share my screen so that we can um, look at this PowerPoint together. Here we go. Um, let's see see. Okay. So can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes, now we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's jump in to talking about the Gilman. Some overview information about eligibility and the applicants um, Gilman is looking for. You um, as a Gilman Scholar, you will need to have U.S. citizenship, be enrolled in a two or four year undergraduate program. So whether you're an associate's or a bachelor's student, it's good to know that you're eligible in that sense. Um, but here's a really important piece. You need to be receiving a Pell Grant. And if you're not sure if you're receiving a Pell Grant, then you will need to check your financial aid report um, with the financial aid office. And last but not least, um, you need to be applying to and eventually accepted into a study abroad or an internship abroad program. Now over here on the right, you can see that um, applicants, they're really looking for applicants from diverse ethnic backgrounds, um, students going to non-traditional destinations, first generation college students, students with disabilities, students in credit bearing internships, um, and also students in majors underrepresented abroad. So these are some of their priorities. Um, and underrepresented majors, in case you're not certain about that, would include STEM majors. And the quick overview of the amount, um, up to $5,000 for your study or internship abroad. And of course, always important, that deadline, which is coming up soon. October 6th will be here before you know it. Um, and as a nationally competitive scholarship, we are here to help you find and apply for these. And typically they do take many weeks, if not months to prepare. So now is the time to begin, which is why we are hosting and encouraging everyone to uh, begin those applications now. Okay, moving on, and we're going to go to slideshow view. Um, the mm, skipped back one second. There we go. So Gilman's mission is to increase the diversity of students studying abroad. So Gilman really focuses not only on lesser visited countries, 
um, but they want more study abroad applications from students who are underrepresented in study abroad programs. So that includes underrepresented minority students. Um, these are priorities for Gilman and this is good, good for you to know about as you're considering applying. Um, with that, we're getting into the application itself. Uh, the bulk of it is really two to three essays, and I will pass the baton to Mandy Lisito, who will share a little bit more about these essays with you. Yeah, so this is going to be um, kind of where the bulk of our meetings are going to be coming from. When we work with students on the Gilman Scholarship, we will spend a lot of time going back and forth on um, drafts and reviewing these drafts for these essays. And a lot of times that can take um, multiple, multiple drafts and multiple meetings as well. So to kind of break these down a little bit. So first is the statement of purpose. So this is going to be kind of similar to a statement of purpose that if you are applying to, let's say, a graduate school or um, some other nationally competitive scholarship, it's going to be your, it's kind of like building your case for applying for this scholarship and how, how you are a good candidate for this scholarship. So part of that is going to include what your future career goals are, what your future academic goals are, and how the study abroad trip is tying into those goals. Um, this will also include why you picked the specific country that you're visiting and how the program itself um, is tying back into those goals. Um, and it's also just kind of what other ways you set out, um, set apart of um, the other candidates. It's going to be what um, makes you a great candidate when it comes to leadership, involvement, um, things like that. So then on to the community impact essays. Um, so with this, there's kind of like a two-parter to it. It's going to start with building mutual understanding. So this kind of ties back to that mission that Katie was, um, excuse me, Dr. Quinto was just talking about. And uh, in that with building mutual understanding, Gilman wants to see how you're going to be an effective citizen diplomat while you are abroad. So how you're going to tie the link between the United States and your host country. So that could be um, along the lines of how you are blending in, as not blending in, but rather how you are um, blending the two cultures together as you are abroad. So um, different ways you are going to be involved in the host country. That's where this kind of essay um, really, um, that's gonna be the bulk of this essay. Um, furthermore, we have the follow-on service project proposal. So that's when you return back after your study abroad trip. Uh, you have to propose a project to, to kind of continue to spread the good news of Gilman is how I like to say it to the students I work with. So it's kind of um, coming back and talking about your experience applying for Gilman and how Gilman helped you while you were abroad. Um, it's talking about your experience abroad and sharing with that. So that can look there's so many different options when it comes to this follow-on service project. So that can vary to um, working, partnering with our office or a CGE, and we can kind of have some targeted, targeted workshops on campus, whether it's um, with certain populations or with different students. Um, we can just kind of target um, different populations. So let's say you're a cadet, you could host a cadet-centered Gilman workshop, um, for example. So um, that is kind of the bulk of the follow-on service project, and this doesn't have to be limited to UNG. It can be um, going back to your high school or your hometown and doing some sort of involvement in that way, or it can be, um, it can really be justified to whatever degree. Um, lastly, um, we have the critical need language um, essay. So with this one, this is actually um, an optional award, so this might not apply to all students. Um, it is the opportunity to receive an additional $3,000 um, for up to $8,000. Um, so this would be for applicants who are going to be studying a critical language while they are abroad. Um, and a list of some of those uh, languages um, are on the Gilman website if you're unsure if yours qualifies as a critical language. Um, so a part of that is going to be talking about your mo motivations for studying for a critical language um, and how that ties back into your academic and career goals again. Um, and I think that is going to be the gist of it, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the critical languages that are, are out there. Um, of course, there's going to be like Japanese, Korean, or Arabic. 
uh, Hindi, Portuguese, Russian, to name a few. So um, I think that kind of wraps up the essay portion. I hope I didn't go too long on that. <laughs> I just talked about it for a long time. <laughs> that was very helpful, Mandy. Thank you so much. No, that's perfect. The essays are such an important piece of the application. That's, I think, really helps folks to learn more about the process of preparing those essays. Um, and um, we will circle back when we conclude the slideshow to provide you with the contact information from the colleagues we introduced at the beginning. I did want to let you know about that because our partnership with the Center for Global Engagement is so important, um, especially with Gilman because our colleagues in the Center for Global Engagement will be helping you find these study abroad, study and in internship abroad programs, and then um, working with you through that process it, as we work with you on the scholarship application side. So no, that was a perfect description of the essays. Thank you so much, Mandy. Um, and with that, I am going to reintroduce Jimena Luna, our special guest, Gilman Scholar. Um, and I'm going to stop the screen share so that we can just um, maybe ask you to share a little bit about your experiences, Jimena. Um, and I am I'm happy to kind of uh, guide with some questions, if that's okay. Um, tell us a little bit more about your process of finding your study abroad. Okay, so. I actually had to go back to my essays right now because after Gilman, I applied to other scholarships. So I wasn't sure <laughs> what I talk about in my Gilman. Um, but the process, I think it was, it wasn't hard now that I think back. Um, I, I remember my professor, my major is Mother Languages. So my Spanish professor told me he had a study abroad um, in Spain for five weeks. And at first I was like, no, I can't do that. How am I gonna pay for it? Like, that's crazy. My parents can't pay for it. Um, and and then after I talked to, I was part of, I'm part of the McNair Scholar, so I talked to Jules, she's my coordinator. And she told me, she's like, oh, you should make an appointment with Dr. Lin. And I was like, who's Dr. Lin? Like, I never heard about it, about her or anything. And so I did, I made an appointment with her and she told me about the scholarship, she told me about other scholarships. Um, and I was like, wow, like there is so much, you know? Um, so I started the process with her. I started writing my two essays um, and she was really, really helpful. At first it was really intimidating because I would send her my draft and she would send them back with so many like <laughs> so many red things she's like change this you can change this this way this way and it's like oh my god now we're gonna finish this <laughs> um but eventually like now i look back and i read my essays like i'm really proud of those essays <laughs> um and and you know it's just nice to have the support of the the office and the global engagement i remember i was working with Victor at the time, and he was really helpful too because there's all these scholarships, um, not just Gilman, UNG offers all these scholarships, and I was able to, those scholarships helped me pay for all my study abroad. I didn't have to pay anything, which it was really nice. Thank you for sharing about that. So I have another question for you. Um, you just heard Mandy describe the essays, but can you tell us a little bit more about that process for you? Just kind of to go into more detail, um, what challenges you had with writing the essays, what concerns, um, and I'm so glad you're proud of them. I'm very excited <laughs> to hear that. But yeah, tell us a little bit more maybe about that process okay. for you. Okay, yes. So the first one, I talk about, that's my part, my statement, right? I'm not sure how they're going anymore because I've been going through a lot of <laughs> essays and things like that. Um, okay, so the first one, I talk a little bit about my experience. Um, I came from Mexico six years ago. So I talk about that and how I had to get used to that. Um, so it's basically like they just want to make sure that if you go to another country, like you're going to be able to represent the United States and stay the whole time you, you make the commitment to. Um, so I talk about that, and I talked about the challenges I had to overcome when I came here. 
Um, I also talk about my program, um, what my program was about, why I chose that program. Um, and I did talk about how um, those credits was gonna help me with my, my major in my bachelor's. And then um, I, at the end, I talk about my financial need and how my parents couldn't help me pay for it and that I needed the money if I wanted to study abroad. Um, so that was the first one. The first one I think it was more about myself, my story. So that one was, now I can say it was easy probably when I was writing it, I probably said something else, but um, it wasn't that challenging. And the second one, um, my follow-up project, that one was easy, I guess. You just have to be really what I did is talk about how I wanted to hold a study abroad fair with LSA. At the time I was working, I was a officer for the Latino Student Association at my IUNG. So I talk about um, how many members we have. Like I was really specific, like if I was gonna get food, if I was gonna collaborate with other offices, how the event was gonna run, all of that. Um, so on that one, you just have to be really, really specific and have a plan. Um, and I did, um, I did the follow-up project when I came back. Um, so that was really cool. So it's not, I mean, now I say that they're not challenging, <laughs> but there, it's a really good experience. You learn a lot about yourself. And then after writing those essays, you get to know who you are and to put it in a paper, which I think that's really helpful for, for the next scholarship that you're gonna apply for. That is a perfect segue. Per first of all, thank you for sharing more about that process for you and those words of wisdom. Um, but this is to kind of get you thinking about what if you had not gotten the Gilman Scholarship? What do you think you learned from it regardless? Um, well, I think that because after Gilman, I applied to all the scholarships and I haven't got all of them. Um, so, you know, at first it's like, oh, I hard, I try so hard in these essays and it is kind of disappointing at first, but then you realize that you learn a lot from the process. Um, you learn to make those connections with the office. Um, and then once you apply for one thing, even if you don't get it, <laughs> um, you will get so many emails from the internet. Hey, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> um, so I think that's really, really, really unique. And like that's, you know, that's building a um, network that you wanna have for your future plans. And this, this like I never really thought about applying for a national competitive scholarship. You know, like that was something, like, that was never in my plans. Um, and I didn't know anyone that did. And like during the process, like um, two of my friends were applying with me. So that makes it so easier for me. And then I remember last, last semester, like last time, last year when other students applied for it and I was helping some of them, um, I was kind of like the first one that they like reach out to me and they're like, hey, I got Gilman. Thank you so much for, for your support, for trusting in me. And it's, it's just really nice to, to be able to encourage all these students to do what I thought couldn't do at first. Um, so I'm really grateful for the opportunity, for being able to get to know more about myself. Um, I got better at writing now. <laughs> like I can write a part, uh, an essay for my class in like one hour. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's fabulous. And one last question, um, what is, a piece of advice that you would give if a students might be interested in Gilman? Um, to apply, just go for it. Like even if you're not 100% sure, just go for it. Um, start your draft, send it to Dr. Kindo, Dr. Lin, and they're going to help you. Like you're not alone in the process. Even you can send it to me, <laughs> I'm here to help. Um, but just go for it, you know, like, even if you don't get it, like, of course, like apply to other scholarship while you're applying to Gilman. But um, just go for it. Like, that's my best advice I can give you. 
awesome advice. Thank you so much, Jimena. Wonderful welcome. words of wisdom. <laughs> and we really appreciate you sharing about your experiences today. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, we are getting ready to wrap up. I do want to share my screen to give you some contact information for our colleagues in the Center for Global Engagement and for Nationally Competitive Scholarships Advisors. Um, because as I mentioned, you'll be working with all of us on these applications. Um, in fact, our colleagues in CGE certify your application. That's a required step in this process. So ASAP, you want to start working with our colleagues in CGE to help you identify the program you're interested in to get started with that whole process. Um, and then we, we will be working with you on the application itself. So let me share this um, contact info. Can everyone see that okay? I'm gonna move it over here. Um, okay, so in Delanaga, you see you have an email address and phone number uh, for CGE. Okay. Oh. It's not up on, on the screen anymore. Oh, it's not? What? Oh. Yeah, person running, there we go. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Weird. Okay. Um, Can you also read all of this information out loud for the recording? Sorry. Absolutely. Yes. So yes, the Center for Global Engagement, we have the contact information for Delanaga, um, and that's global at ung.edu is the email address, and the phone number is 706-867-2858. And then our colleagues in CGE, um, in the Gainesville, Oconee, Cumming campuses, that is the same email address, so global at ung.edu, but a different phone number, 678-717-2347. So do make um, your advising appointment um, ASAP to get started on that process of um, finding that study abroad, and our wonderful colleagues are going to help you with that process. And um, Dr. Quinto, yes. I would like to add one thing. You can also make an appointment directly with us at the Center for Global Engagement at cgeadvising.ung.edu. Perfect. Thank you so much, Shane. So that link will take them directly to the scheduler. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. So that's, that's kind of the most direct way, I think. One stop to make that appointment. Um, and ASAP, this is the time to do it, right? So Absolutely. the sooner the better. <laughs> we know you're busy, but um, can make that appointment and, and find the time to really get started on this process and now. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and the contact info for NCS Advising, you also can just visit us at this link to schedule the appointment, NCS advising.ung.edu. So once you go to that site, that's how you'll schedule um, with the Nationally Competitive Scholarships Advisors to help you get started with the Gilman Scholarship process of preparing that application. Um, so I, that is, I think, our overview for today. Mandy, can you think of anything else you'd like to add? Or I don't know, if our, any of our guests would like to add anything, please feel free. We are just so glad that you're interested in the Gilman Scholarship as you're um, attending this presentation. So we really, really encourage you to reach out. And even if you're not sure if you're eligible for Gilman, but you're interested in study abroad, nationally competitive scholarships, we want you to reach out to us regardless. So we really hope we hear from you soon. So thank you again, everyone, for participating in today's presentation. And for everyone who is attending the presentation, we look forward to working with you. So take care, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.